Shalom. Happy Thursday to everyone out there. This is Rabbi Roy, and today we're doing our uh, tour portion for the New Covenant. This is Thursday, and we've we've arrived now at the time we're going to unravel everything that's been talked about in the Torah. The, this week's Torah portion has been Achare Mot, and it's talking about basically uh, it begins with the, the the Lord taking out the sons of Aaron. Now, this happened in the Torah portion of Shemini, but this is where it is explained, and this is what happened with in, within this Torah portion, that the Lord is explaining it, and we see the ramifications for it. But the point is, and the big point for us today as a believer in, in the Lord, is that the Lord always, 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 always is looking upon our hearts. He, it's not about how well you do this or that as much as it is he wants your heart to be before him. Because he can direct a man's heart. It says in Proverbs that the king's heart is directed by the Lord. So we need to understand that your heart is what is being looked at. Why are you doing the things you do? What's your motivation? Is your heart like David's? Is it true be, truly before the Lord? Or is your heart like one of the Pharisees in the Gospels where they are out for their own uh, uh, bidding? They're out for their own celebrity. You know, we live in a day today of great celebrity. You know, people want to what, does, uh, what do the actors think? And what do the sports figures think? And what do the politicians think? And what do the great preachers think? Listen, what does God think? And remember, God knows everything. God knows you. And understand that this Torah portion is all about inspecting your own heart, making sure that your heart is properly before the Lord. Because the, the damage could be severe. If you, if you go before the Lord with falseness in you, you're going to be blinded spiritually. The devil tries to get in to disrupt you and your worship before the Lord. He wants to disrupt your life before the Lord. He wants to distract you and get you thinking about other things. That is why during this quarantine process that we're going through, it's important for all of us to keep our eyes on the Lord because he's still the Lord. The Lord is bigger than the, uh, the coronavirus. He's bigger than COVID-19. He knows the end from the beginning. And he knows whether or not you are with him or not. And this is what is being discussed in our this week's Torah portion. And when you get to the New Covenant portion of it, you start to see that, indeed, the Lord is really more concerned about your inner being, your spiritual man, your spiritual life, more than he is the outward extremities. Because the outward extremities are geared by the what's inside of you. Your life is run by your spirit. You don't, a lot of people don't even realize it. But understand, as we discuss the new covenant, the Brit Hadashah, the Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and our Savior, the fulfillment of the law, understand that he has a lot to say about this very subject, and we're going to discuss that today. Now, remember, you know, I keep showing you, you're probably wondering, why do I keep showing you all these Hebrew words? Because there is going to be times I'm going to be explaining many of the Hebrew letters and maybe a lot of the Hebrew language and how intricate and how wonderful the Word of God is framed by even the alphabet, the alphabet. It is framed perfectly because the Word of God is perfect. And it's more perfect as you go on. So we'll be studying that as we go. But today, we want to look at your heart my heart before the Lord. We want to examine what happened to Nadab and Abihu, what was going on in their hearts, and understand that the Lord has a lot to say about this very issue. Now, in the Berith Hadashah, which is New Covenant in Hebrew, we're going to look at Matthew 15 and Mark chapter 12. And, and the subject matter is clean or unclean. How do we know if something in God's eyes is clean or unclean? And this is what they were talking about amongst uh, themselves and to the Lord in these scriptures. It says in Matthew 15, 10 through 20, when he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear and understand. Notice that he knew they didn't get it. Not, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. You know, to a lot of people that live there, spiritual life and legalism and in trying to, uh, uh, you know, go after this law or that law. Understand it's not about your brain. It's about your heart. And the Lord knows your heart. It's not about you being so perfect in your kosher laws. It's about what is coming out of you that really defiles a man. 
and understand that the Lord knows perfectly where all of us are. Then his disciples came to him, came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? Now you have to understand who the Pharisees were. They were the celebrities of the day. They were the ones that had everybody looking at their life like it was the ideal life and you wanted to be like, liked by the Pharisees. Uh, if you were liked by the Pharisees, you were in. If you weren't liked by the Pharisees, you were out. They were the hoity-toity of the day. And not they weren't just religious figures. They were the ones that were controlling the wealth of Judea. They were the ones that were involved in who was popular and what went and what didn't go. And they had their fingers on in every pie going. So, so the disciples had heard that the Pharisees were offended when Yeshua had said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the man. Of course, that went way over their head. You can see how it would, because they were the ones that were struggling with things like doing things on the Shabbat. They were struggling with things like, is this kosher? Should we turn on a light on Saturday? Or should we do this or do that? It's not about how well you legalistically uh, frame the law and try to live by it. No, it's what comes out of your heart that proves who you are, to the good or to the bad. What comes out of your heart exposes who all of us really are. What comes out of our heart is what is the telltale sign of who and what we actually are. And the Lord goes on. But he answered after the Pharisees. Oh, the Pharisees are shook up. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Now, the light should go off. The bell should be ringing right here because think about what the Lord just said. This is not a middle of the road stance he is taking. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted. Now, who is that? Think about everybody in the religious community, in the political community, anybody there that has not been put there by our heavenly father will be uprooted. And understand that there was a lot of phoniness then, as just as there's a lot of phoniness now. There's a lot of, there was a lot of corruption going on then, a lot of political corruption, a lot of religious corruption, a lot of, a lot of hearts that were shady and people were confused. And the Lord says this, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. That's a message of judgment. That's a message of impending doom to anybody that is doing what they're doing, and they're not doing it by the grace, by the word of our Heavenly Father. Whoa. And here's what Yeshua tells the disciples about them. He says, let them alone. Don't bother with them. Don't go around them. And I would say, don't be influenced by them either. Don't allow them to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Don't allow the, those that are going to be uprooted Dis discuss with you God's plan for your life. You need to discuss with God what God wants out of your life, not with what people who think they know everything, what they want. Yeshua said, let them alone. And then he said, they are blind leaders of the blind. Now picture it in your head, somebody that can't see, and he's leading around somebody else that can't see. And he says that if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. In other words, the hoity-toity of Yeshua's day, the Pharisees, and the hoity-toity of our day, everybody else, all these godless celebrities you see around trying to influence people in the scientific world, in the political world, and even in the religious world that are telling, selling people a bill of goods that's outside of what our Heavenly Father has said, they're the blind leading the blind, and they will end up in a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. And Yeshua said, Are you also still without understanding? Here, Yeshua's been talking to them, and Peter, he's just not getting it. Do you, the Lord goes on. Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? The natural process? This is the, he's taking in all the things that he's been told. Everybody is hung up on things from the scripture, and they got it misconstrued, thinking that the Lord is more caring about whether or not something is, is kosher or, what, or is it the proper diet or this or that. We get hung up on these things, but the Lord's not. The Lord can direct your paths if you'll ask him. And he says that, that's the natural process. That is not what defiles you. 
You see, the laws for kashrut, which is the kosher laws, were meant to make you healthy. If you keep the, the law of Moses, as far as it concerns your dietary uh, life, it'll make you more healthy. If you understand that the law is meant for the good of mankind and not to make you some legalistic, rigid, uh, uh, religious hypocrite, understand that the natural process, God understands what we're going through and he wants you to be healthy. That's what the Kashrut laws were meant to do. But as far as defiling you, no, 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 no. That's a spiritual issue. But look, because look what the next thing Yeshua said. He says, no, that's the natural process of, of putting something in your mouth. It, go on, it goes through your digestive system and it's eliminated. He says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth, they come from the heart. You see, you and I, we speak from the heart and we speak what's in our heart and they defile the man. Understand, that is how you are defiled by what comes out of your mouth what you are saying. And I'm not just talking about having coarse language. That's part, that could be part of it. But anything that is not of faith is sin, it says in scripture. Anything that does not build up the kingdom of God is coming out of your mouth. It's, it's not profitable. Everything that comes out of your mouth needs to be according to our heavenly father or it will be eliminated. Yeshua said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. So understand that your, your heart is your spirit, that's your inner man, your spirit man, your heart. You speak out of your heart what your heart is saying. And understand, that is what either makes you accepted or defiles you. Yeshua goes on. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. You see, if you have in your heart murders, you hate people, you're defiled. If you, and it's not talking about just physically pulling the trigger and killing somebody. It's talking about you hating somebody as well. Adulteries. It's not even about you physically committing the act of adultery, which would be horrible enough. But if you are doing it in your heart, if you're, if you're lusting after people, you're defiled. And what is, gonna, what is in you, will eventually come out. A lot of times we can hide things, but eventually it's going to come out. Fornications, you know, all these things that are that are in our hearts, that are in our spirits, that are in our minds. You know, it's a shame that in the day we live in today that so many in the ministry are hooked on pornography. They falling, they're falling into this trap that they can't get out of because they don't realize they can go to the Lord, but the Lord's going to want to clean them up. What comes out of your heart what comes out of your mind will come out of your mouth, and that defiles you. Thefts, false witness, lying. A lot of people are in the habit of lying when they think they're serving and pleasing God. No. False witness is something that is defiling, and you are defiled. Blasphemies. I hear blasphemies all the time. I, I was uh, talking the other day one of the, uh, to somebody. The reason I say Yeshua is because I want to make it clear who to people who I serve. He's my Lord and Savior. Because a lot of times I hear Jesus Christ, and I'm not offended by that at all, but understand that people are using the Lord's name in vain, and they're using it to blaspheme him every time they use it that way. And it just gets on my nerves. These are the things which defile a man, things that are coming out of your mouth because they're coming out of your heart. But to eat without unwashed hands does not defile a man. Now, you could get sick. In fact, it, with our coronavirus, this is a good time to really be washing your hands and your face and your body, taking showers and so forth. That's, but that's not the point that Yeshua is making. The defilement is within you. It's within your heart. So understand that's what the Lord is speaking to. See, then he goes into the greatest commandment in Matthew 22. And the greatest commandment, again, that if you don't know, there's two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's number one, to love the Lord. And it's not talking about obey. And it's not a, talking about trying to uh, create a God in your image and saying, oh yeah, that's my God. No, it's the God of the Bible. It's the God of Torah. It's Yeshua HaMashiach. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Yeshua. That's the Savior. That's the Mashiach. That's the Messiah. That's the author of all the scriptures. That's the word of God. That is one we love. And 
just like it, love others as you love yourself. If you can fulfill those two, Yeshua said, you fulfill all of the commandments. See, it's not about how much you can keep the law. The law is written in our hearts by the spirit of the living God. And he puts his wisdom and he puts his light in our lives. And that's what keeps us strong. It keeps us fresh before him. So let's look at our messianic application today. Looking at these very things, it says in Hebrews chapter 3, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Messiah Yeshua, who was faithful to him who appointed him, Abba Father, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. He's speaking to the Hebrews here. And he goes on in chapter 9. For Messiah has not entered the holy places made with hands, not talking about our tabernacle or our temple that we can do on earth, which are copies of the true. The tabernacle and the temple were patterns of heaven. There's three main chambers in heaven. There's an outer court, a holy place, and the throne of grace is found in the Holy of Holies, which are copies of the true. But Yeshua went into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood or of another. No, no. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And he did that one time. And that one time is sufficient. And that one time allowed you and I to be saved. That one time that the Son of God came down to planet Earth and died for us, destroyed the works of Satan, destroyed everything that evil had planned against us. And our path out of this mess that we find ourselves in on planet Earth is through Jesus the Messiah. Only. There is no other path. And you find that in this world, the only light that we have is the light that the Lord himself provides. Now, this has been a really good week for our Torah portion. I love these subjects. And I, I want to also mention to you that I find very, very interesting the pattern of our Torah portions, how they coincide with what we're going through with this pandemic and quarantine. It's pretty amazing when you find out what is the Lord speaking to our hearts as we're sitting at home quarantined. And you can see he's wanting his body to get cleaned up. He's wanting us to get our act right, to start walking right. And some are getting it, some aren't. And so praise the Lord. Now coming next week, our Torah portion is Amor, which is another really good one. So let's pray. Father, in Yeshua's name, I pray for my brother and my sister who are watching this, that you would bless their house. Lord, I pray that you would touch them. And I pray that you would help them to pray and to seek your face and to be diligent about the things that you're dealing with them about. And we commit all of these things to you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now we're Beit Mashiach Messianic Community. Uh, we're, we're, we're right now, we're at a standstill like everyone else is, but we're, we're itching to get back. And as we're looking forward to getting back before our people and before the Lord and, and worshiping him, we want to just invite you to watch the videos that we're putting out there. We'll keep doing it, by the way. We're enjoying it. But we want to be a community that worships the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we want to be a, co a community that loves one another the way the Lord wants us to love one another. To stay up to date on all Beit Mashiach news, please visit our website at BeitMashiach.net. Or you can visit our Facebook page at Facebook.com. Just go to the Beit Mashiach community. And all our teachings will be posted on our Facebook page at Beit Mashiach and also my personal web page or Facebook page at the Roy Blight. And you can find more teachings that I have on YouTube. Just search for Rabbi Roy Blight or Roy Blight and you'll find them there. If you'd like to uh, help out with tithe and offerings, we'd appreciate it, of course, but be a blessing. You can go to BaitMashiach.net and go to online giving, or you can make a check or money order payable to Bait Mashiach and send it to 6194 Moonbeam Drive, Lake Worth, Florida, 33463. Any prayer requests you have, and they're very welcome, just email your request to acjoyroy at gmail.com. That's my personal uh, email account. Or, or leave a comment below on this video. Remember, we're the light of the world. We're the, we're the five virgins. We desire to be the five virgins whose lamps are lit and, are, and the Spirit of God is filling us day by day by day. And we're walking in His light every day. 
as the remnant, as the bride of the Lord, as the bride of Messiah. That's who we desire to be. And that's who I hope you desire to be because we, the Lord wants to pull us out of the mundane. He wants to, he wants to specifically take you and he wants to make you the best you you can be in him. None of us have arrived yet, but we strive to get our wedding gowns ready for that day. Remember, it says in Revelation 19, 7, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And we're making ourselves ready. We're getting ready. Sometimes you have to be ready by being patient. And sometimes you have to just seek the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and allow him just to minister to you as you're still. Remember, this scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Well, we're pretty much forced to be still right now. So you and I, let's be still and know that Yeshua is Lord. He is Adonai. Let us close today with the ironic benediction. Ivarecha Adonai Vodish Marecha Yair Adonai Panabalecha Dikunecha Isa Adonai Panabalecha Viasem Lecha Shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Perfect peace. And B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, the Sar Shalom, and our soon coming Prince of Peace. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll get with you next time.